Hello everyone. In the last session, we discussed about the slip test. In that slip test, we are finding the direct axis, direct axis reactance XD. That is um, VA max by IA minimum and quadrature axis reactance XQ that equal VA minimum by IA max. VA minimum by IA max. So the continuation part of the here we have two statements that is the relative velocity between field poles and the rotating armature MMF wave is equal to the difference between the synchronous speed and the rotor speed that is a slip speed. So general thing so generally we have the field poles rotating armature MMF so generally we just assume this is the field MMF or field poles and and uh, the rotating armature MMF wave we have the rotating armature MMF wave MMF wave so the difference between these two between generally the difference between the speeds is different between the synchronous speed and the rotor speed synchronous speed and the rotor speed that is we can call it as the slip speed we can name it as the slip speed right here during the slip test an emf is induced why the emf is induced because between these two armature mmf and field mmf we have the some speed difference is there in the open field winding so in the field winding itself the emf is induces which is ac sinusoidal at slip frequency so the emf should be it's a ac waveform ac waveform ac sinusoidal at the slip frequency and it has the frequency with the slip frequency right so here the diagram is look at here the emf induces this is the direct axis emf now it is quadrature axis emf so the direct axis emf will be zero and in the quadrature axis emf will be maximum and again here in the direct axis emf will be zero and the quadrature axis emf will be minimum and again this is the direct axis and this is the quadrature axis like this this will be like this so here emf is ac waveform that will be slip frequency okay. generally here the rotor rotor in the synchronous motor always driven less than synchronous speed so always le less than synchronous speed right next next we will discuss the next topic is the power flow equations next topic is the power flow equations so to understand the power flow equation the open the open open circuit emf we can take it as e at an angle of del and it will generate the armature current and it will have the armature resistance and armature reactance that is the synchronous impedance at an angle of theta and the load load is possible v at an angle of zero here we can make some relation the no load emf e equal the no load emf e equal to voltage plus drop voltage ia into zs right here we can give the relation armature current equal to armature current value equal to e minus v by zs because this is the voltage drop and this is the voltage drop and it been the impedance so if we write in vector form that is e at an angle of del minus v at an angle of zero and zs at an angle of theta that is at an angle of theta so by doing the calculation we can write like this so we can split like this e by zs and del minus theta here v by zs 
and minus theta because 0 minus theta is minus theta so this is the thing this is armature current value we can convert into the conjugate ia star then it will be like this es by e by zs not e e by zs at an angle of theta minus del one thing and v by zs at an angle of theta at an angle of theta so finally we will get the current value conjugate current ia star is like this v by zs at an angle of theta minus del v s v by zs at an angle of theta so finally we can give the conclusion the complex power complex power so complex power value equal to complex power output equal so we can write s equal to p plus jq p plus jq that will be right like this v into armature current into star like this armature current into star from this v value you know that v at an angle of zero i a star value e by zs at an angle of theta minus del one thing v by zs at an angle of theta so by doing the modification we will get e v by zs at an angle of theta minus del next v square by zs at an angle of theta all right so we can extend this just look at here this is the angle it is r at an angle of theta form then we will convert into the complex form we are converting polar into complex form that is so we can write so e into v by zs from this we can write cos theta minus del plus j sin theta minus del okay minus v square by zs that is cos theta plus j sin theta cos theta plus j sin theta mm, from this we can convert we can separate real parts and imaginary parts from this finally the active power plus the reactive power p plus jq equal to the real part is e v by zs cos theta minus del minus v square by zs cos theta this is the one thing plus j e v by zs sin theta minus del minus v square by zs sin theta sin theta so from this we can write the active power from this we can write we can give the active power p equal e v by zs cos theta minus del v square by zs cos theta q equal to again e v by zs sin theta minus del minus v square by zs sin theta so we are getting two equations one equation is the active power one equation is the active power and the another equation is the reactive power active power and another equation is the reactive power so this is the p is the active power and q is the reactive power right so we are getting the final equations but we can again modify these equations that is the equations are like this the equation are 
so we can modify the equations like this if it is a cylindrical motor if it is a cylindrical machine just take it as if it is a cylindrical machine then approximately armature uh, resistance will be directly we can take the zero the synchronous impedance and synchronous reactance directly we can write theta value will become the 90 degrees here 90 degrees so from this p value just substitute these values armature 0 and theta value 90 degrees then active power will become like this active power equal p equal to ev by xs into sin del this is the first equation and if you substitute the reactive power q equal to ev by zs sin is substitute in case of theta then it will become 90 minus del the remaining is v square by zs sin 90 sin 90 so by modifying this finally we will get the re reactive power equal to ev by zs sin 90 minus del it will become the cos del and v square by zs sin 90 value is the 1 sin 90 value is the 1 so so finally we can write the reactive power equation is like this that is if we common v by zs means zs will be converted as xs just take it as the excess then it will become e cos del minus v because zs is become the excess only e cos del minus v so we are getting the two equations the first equation is p equal to ev by excess sin del first equation the second equation reactive power q equal to v by xs e cos del minus v right so these are the two equations we can get the power flow equations okay i hope all of you understand the session thank you